All right, welcome back everybody. So everything's been cleaned and inspected. And if you remember from disassembly, I mentioned I was going to clean this whole housing and have a better look at this felt dust seal that was up in here. I ended up pulling that out because, I'll just show you here, it was not in very good condition. That's just, uh, like I said, just a round chunk of felt. It's all dried up, it's all worn out. It was no longer exerting any tension on the shaft. It was pretty much ineffective. Really wasn't anything that you missed there because it's held in by this one inch cup plug that they just drilled a hole in the middle of and that's what seats it into the housing. I just took a punch, stuck it down the spindle, got in behind this plug and just popped it right out and then you can dig this piece out with a pick after that. Part number for that felt seal is a 1A8742. I got mine from Florin. They still had one in stock. I'm soaking it in some oil here right now. You always want to soak these felt seals in oil so that they have some lubrication when you put them together. Otherwise, they'll run hot on the shaft and pretty much wear out right away. So that should be good to go right there. Now to talk about the impeller and the packing. So the impeller has a little bit of, or the impeller shaft, I should say, has a little bit of wear on it. And honestly, I'm going to leave it alone. I've seen them a lot worse. And we still have viable packing inside the gland nut. Um, it's it's still pliable, it's not hardened up, it's not worn out. Good amount left in there, so we're just gonna leave this thing alone. I'm gonna put it all back together just the way it is. And I'm confident that it's going to uh, do very well. So I'll show you a worst case scenario. D3400 pump, impeller, and shaft. This is out of the beer can engine. Um, profound wear where that packing nut was and impeller loose on the shaft the taper pin has sheared and the only thing keeping the impeller from completely spinning on the shaft is what's left of the old woodruff key right here dig that out of there as you can see that key is profoundly worn it was ready to shear off itself wallowed out the slot in the shaft um, Pretty much worst case scenario, you can see where the impeller had drifted up and started wearing on the water pump housing. Everything right here is shot, so thankfully 1113's fared much better than that. So to begin the assembly process, we'll get the new felt dust seal put in, and you can see you can squeeze oil out of it. That's why we pre-soak that thing. And I don't think there's any good lighting options here for the camera, and my fingers are probably going to obstruct the view <laughs> for the majority of it too, but... Got the felt seal started down in. Put the cup plug on top. Now, don't try this at home, boys and girls, but we can make a fancy tool or a 9 16th socket with a 3 8 extension. Fits perfectly through that uh, impeller shaft bore in this housing. and acts as a pretty darn good driver to seat that seal. So I'm gonna deviate from the disassembly process a little bit here. I'm gonna put the impeller and shaft in next because I think it's gonna be easier to get this impeller shaft guided through that new felt seal without the pulley hub and everything on out here. And having that in right now is not gonna mess us up in the future anyhow. So first thing we need to do is start the packing nut back on. I shall, should also mention this bushing that the packing nut threads onto is still in very, very good condition. It's a good fit on the impeller shaft. We didn't have to do anything at all with that. So Don't want to tighten this uh, packing nut down just yet. Just get it started on there. And I'm not going to put any kind of lubrication on the shaft either. That's what the coolant is going to do. So we'll start the shaft up into that seal. There, we're started through. Very good. Nice amount of drag on that impeller shaft. I know that dust seal is going to be back to doing its job. I'm not going to bother cinching that packing nut down too tight at this point either. We'll just get it just so we can see, or just so we can feel a little additional drag on that impeller. All right, it's good. 
Next, I'll get the pulley hub loaded up with bearings and a new seal. Looking at 1113's original bearings, sure enough, they are very worn, very loose, and there's even a lot of discoloration on this inner race, usually indicative of something that's ran hot for a while. The other bearing isn't any better. Lots of discoloration in there. I'd say a pretty good bet these things ran dry at one point in time. Luckily, a couple new old stock bearings, 1B4107, Caterpillar Pac-Man logo on those boxes, awesome. But looking at the original bearings from 1113, these are Fafner 205W. 205W is such a standard size bearing. You can get these online parts stores, bearing houses. You don't have to go back to CAT. You don't even have to try and get lucky and find new old stock. Unless you have a Cosmoline addiction, kind of like uh, what I suffer from. Grease seal. Original CAT number 1B2346 crossed to a CR15039 right here. Specs on that as usual, 1.5 inch shaft, 2.374 inch bore, 2.378 seal OD and a half inch wide. Um, kind of a nice heavy duty seal. Close as you get to the old uh, complete steel bodied uh, closed in originals. Okay, bearings clean and packed with fresh grease. I'm gonna start by installing this back bearing first. So we have the seal bore out here, bearing bore just in here. I'll tap the new bearing in until it is just even with the bottom of the seal bore like that. Now the seal gets driven in on top of it. Like that. So sticking true with the original design, I'm going to put a couple of those machine screws in just to kind of back the seal up a little bit, even though they were deemed to be not necessary in the later tractors. But because they stake the heads on these, and that is common practice, even the beer can engine had the same screws with the same staking marks on there, it makes it kind of hard to reuse these things because they get pretty beat up. That's not a problem. They're just standard machine screws with a screwdriver slot on the head. So we'll drop a couple of new ones in. There, cinched them down, replicated the factory staking marks in all the same spots. So that finishes us up on the back side. Next, the spacer that goes between the bearings gets dropped in. I should also mention I took the opportunity to pack that entire hub cavity full of grease. So now the outer bearing can be tapped in and this one can go all the way down against the shoulder down in here. With the outer bearing seated I'll put just a slight amount of grease on these threads to help the adjustable pulley flange out. You don't want to overload this area with grease because you certainly don't want anything to be able to fly out and get all over the belt. This is just to provide a little bit of lubrication on those threads to help it resist sticking in the future. Okay, we can stop with it right there. Now the uh, lock bolt with jam nut can be threaded in. And you want to be able, or you want to be sure to position this bolt above one of these two um, milled flats, these slots that are cut into there. Because the end of that bolt has like an unthreaded peg on it, and you want it to engage in one of those slots. You do not want to run that down into the threads that are on the, uh, the pulley hub that'll damage those threads. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when making belt adjustments. I can pop a new grease fitting in now, get it angled so that it's back away from the fan blades. Now with a light coating of grease on the spindle and the hub where the seal will ride, I can guide the pulley on. So at this point, I can pop on the new 1A 8743 lock and I'll just uh, put a little bit of grease on that. Helps to keep the nut from wanting to uh, distort it so bad. Um, the little tab that's bent down goes in the slot on the spindle. And the nut goes on on top of that. Now 
This is not like loading tapered bearings. These ball bearings are not meant to cope with side thrust. So as long as you get this tight enough just to secure everything, that's pretty much good. And you have that spacer between the bearings too. If everything is assembled right with proper dimension, which we have, you know, cat newel stock bearings, I'm not worried about that. As soon as this nut just comes down and contacts, gets tight, everything should pretty much be all stacked up together anyway, and we should be avoiding any excessive thrusts uh, on those ball bearings. Okay, that's pretty good. Give it a little bit more, just to align the flat with the lock tab better. I like that. There, fold over lock. We'll hold that in place. It's a lot smoother than it was before. Okay, we're getting down to it. Fan is the last piece that has to go on. I put plenty more grease out around the splined end of the impeller shaft. Those have to be uh, lubricated where the fan splines to them. We'll take one of the two gaskets I made for this. This seals the um, pulley hub to the fan. Now, two things to watch for. You not only have to line up the cross pin hole in the fan with the cross pin hole in the shaft. You also want to make sure that the grease zerk is not obstructed by one of the fan blades. You can position this so that you'd never get a grease gun <laughs> on that fan blade if you're if you're not careful. So we'll just try it like this. Line the holes. Should have easy access to that zerk fitting right there. Nothing in the way. Gaskets lined up, pin bars lined up, so we can bolt the fan down. There, fan's tight. Now to put the cross pin in, and here's the old one I mentioned uh, during the disassembly that it was pretty worn. Basically, this controls the thrust of the impeller and the shaft. The impeller is always going to want to be pushing its way back away from the water pump housing and that's why you can see the impeller shaft wore so heavily on this front side and then there was wear on either side of that on the back. Wasn't too big of a deal to make a new one. I had some round stock here that was the same diameter luckily so that will just slide through so long as I can align the impeller shaft with the hole. There we are. Now, finally, we can put the center cap on the front and call it done. Okay, do a quick clearance check of the impeller. Good gap there between the impeller and housing. So we know that everything is assembled correctly. If that was rubbing or contacting, I'd be a little bit nervous. Give it the spin test. Nice and smooth. Not rough or noisy like it was before. So we're at that point once again where after everything it took to get to this point, the bolt up is rather anticlimactic, but we'll do the best we can. I should also point out the gasket I made for the water pump is stuck to the pump housing. And yes, we're backing this up with some sealer because as I've said many times before, even though we have ensured all the surfaces are flat and free of burrs, they are not what they once were. So a little bit of sealer can go a long way toward ensuring things don't leak. There. Spins nice, nothing rubbing on the inside. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's, uh, let's finish up with the fan belt. So the Caterpillar part number in the manual is a 2B463 and that is a direct cross to this 
Gates TR34456, marketed for truck and bus series, but apparently it fits Caterpillars too. To put the belt on, I've got the adjustable pulley flange all the way out. And the way this works is the further in you tighten this flange to the inner one, the more it closes that gap and the more it forces that belt out further and further on this pulley, which basically tensions it. That's your belt tightening mechanism. So we're going to have to loop this around some of the fan blades to get it past this front cover housing here. There we go. So now it can bottom out really deep up in this water pump pulley, enough to loop it over the crankshaft pulley at the bottom. Just like that. Now we tighten this adjustable flange in towards the back one until we start getting uh, tension on the belt. You can see the belt working higher and higher on this water pump pulley. Manual states to adjust it until there is approximately one inch of deflection in the belt. So we're getting rather close. There, we're pretty well aligned with one of the uh, lock bolt slots. What I'm going to do now is roll this engine over. takes any potential bind off the belt. We can go a little bit tighter with it yet. So I was trying to advance it to the next lock bolt slot, but it's got a little too tight. So you always err on the loose side. So we'll just back this off and we'll return back to the previous slot. Right there. A little bit more than one inch deflection, but I'd rather uh, I'd rather not have to stretch it so tight that I start overloading bearings. So we'll just lock it down with the bolt and make it permanent with the jam nut. So little by little we're getting there, valve cover up top, water pump on the front, early correct style fan with the smaller blades, everything resealed, new bearings, although I didn't put uh, new packings behind the nut back there, I think they're going to be just fine. And I left this loose for now, I'm going to sneak up on it and just kind of get it adjusted where it needs to be once we have some liquid in this thing. Packings are kind of the ultimate contradiction, they need to leak a little bit if they're going to seal, meaning there has to be a little bit of weepage that comes through to keep the packing and the shaft lubricated, otherwise they'll run hot, burn out, and then they'll leak entirely. So. We'll just fill it up. I'll just watch and make sure we don't have any leaks. If we do, we'll cinch in on that a little bit at a time until it's doing what it seems like it needs to do. So, nice new belt on there. Pretty much made it the best that we could make it within our means. So, happy about that. So, I know it's a two part series to do a water pump. A lot of little detail stuff. Kind of apologize for that, but I wanted to go through it all and make it the best that I could. So, I think we did that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time.